Aloha everyone and welcome to another Tinker's Academy video. I'm your host Kay Elmer and this video is a further installment in the series Benefits of Quantum Healing where I've been documenting the results of studies that have been commissioned by Leila Quantum Tech on the effects of quantum energy has on various biological systems. This video covers a study produced in 2023 on the effects of quantum energy as it has on human cell ATP production. Now most people and myself included had I have no idea like what is ATP. So let's just start with that. What is ATP? Well, it turns out that it is the metabolic process within every cell that exists in our bodies, in plants, any animals, everything living that has cells has to have a metabolic process by which it converts food into energy. Okay. And that's really what it comes down to. Now it is really important. And what does it do for our bodies? I'll have a little, I found this little clip I wanted to share, kind of explain why and how it's so important. At this very moment, trillions of energy releases are happening all throughout your body, contributing to a variety of functions, including body temperature. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is commonly referred to as the energy currency of the body. It's created through aerobic and anaerobic respiration, as well as fermentation inside the cells of the body. It's made up of three phosphates attached to a ribose and an adenine. And when one of those phosphates is hydrolyzed, it releases energy capable of moving proteins. Without it, just as an economy, without a meaningful way to exchange value, everything comes to a grinding halt. So now with that said, the most interesting thing about this study was the company, Leila Quantum Tech, had commissioned uh, a professor. I'll, I'll explain who the principal investigator is in a second. But they commissioned a, a scientist to study uh, on a whim, <laughs> you know, like, hey, does quantum energy actually do anything to the very base process of our cellular functions? And, you know, it's a, just a crazy question to ask, but they decided to ask that. So the synopsis of this study, it is available on the Leila Quantum uh, Tech and the Quantum Upgrade website. Uh, look under research if you want to get a copy of the study. But the general synopsis of the report it was to describe the results of three initial experiments that analyzing quantum or field effects on cellular ATP levels. ATP was selected as the biological readout because it is the energy currency of the cell playing an essential role in all aspects of cell function activity and overall health as explained. So that's what they chose and they wanted to see, hey, does quantum energy affect that? Because it's the very basis of life as we know it and how it functions and how, how we move around. So the principal investigator, and this is really important because this is a scientist. His name is Dr. Robert Joseph Schief. This is completely a third party independent study that was commissioned by Layla. The company did not have any control over the study. It was done by Dr. Schief at the University of Tulsa. Now he's an associate professor of biochemistry at the University of Tulsa. His research focuses on discovering and characterizing novel therapeutic drugs from synthetic libraries and natural products. His areas of expertise are cancer biology, cell metabolism, cell cycle, chemotherapeutics, and drug screening. So this is a gentleman who has decades of experience in working with human cells and studying them. And so that's why he was selected and agreed to help do the study. So now what the study does, and this is the report that you'll, you can read on the website, the methods and materials was simply this. The number of experiments was done. It was repeated three separate times. And if you read the report, Dr. Sheaf was uh, trying to eliminate every possible variance by which ATP production would be uh, modified based on the types of, of cells used, based on the length of time in the incubator, the temperature of the incubator. I mean, all of these incredible finite details are in the, in the report in which he was tweaking all of the various variables to make sure that, you know, as he's measuring the changes in ATP, from one experiment to another, he's tweaking all the little variables to try it every, you know, three different ways to make sure that the results are consistent over, over the overall study. So he did it three separate ways for on purpose and the details of each different way is documented in the report. It's very detailed. Now the material study again, were human cells and he used different human cells depending on different, uh, which different experiment that he ran. But the idea of those, you know, human cell is a human cell and it, all of the cells generate ATP. 
Now, uh, or the microchondria, but let's not get into the, the biochemistry. Now, the process that, that he did was uh, he would make uh, 10 cell cultures, the identical cell cultures in those little Petri dishes, you know, that you're all familiar with. And so now he would separate it into two groups of five. So there'd be five Petri dishes in, you know, one group, five in the other. He labeled them A and B. And then there was a third party colleague because uh, this was all done completely double blind. So he would hand all 10 plates to his colleague who would then expose one group of five plates to quantum energy via the quantum upgrade service. And then the other ones would not be exposed to quantum upgrade. So he had one control group that was that was completely left normal, didn't do anything with it. And he had the other control group of five plates that were exposed to quantum energy. And it was, again, it was double blind. He, Dr. Sheaf was not made aware or at any time knew which group when he then would study the results uh, and, and measure the ATP of the different groups. Uh, he had no idea which ones were exposed to which were not. He would just collect the data and then the data was then analyzed to determine, hey, you know what? Quantum energy does make an effect. Now, the length of exposure of quantum energy on the plates that were exposed was less than five minutes. Uh, he states in his report that he would hand the plates to his colleague and the colleague would literally come back in in five minutes. So it was under five minutes that, that the quantum uh, upgrade service was running on these little plates, okay? Now it was energy only. For those of you using quantum upgrade, you know you can have it energy only or you can have energy and frequency. And this study was done with just quantum upgrade energy. Well, there was no frequencies used, just as an FYI. Now in terms of the measurements, once Dr. Sheaf got the, got the 10 uh, plates back, he would put them in the incubator, then pull them out, and then he would measure it at the 10 minute mark one hour mark, two hour mark, three hour mark, and 10 hours. And he would measure it five separate times to see what the, you know, what the amount of ATP that would come out of the cells, if any, and how it looked over time and, you know, when it would diminish and stop doing that. So the overall results were really fascinating, which was number one, the first experiment, uh, he comments that ATP levels are already higher in the treated sample after 10 minutes and remained higher for at least two hours. By three hours, ATP levels are back to the levels of the untreated group, which is the control group, suggesting the transient increase is real. So that's amazing so just keep in mind you know if for those of you who subscribe to quantum upgrade or you are you know you have a block or a capsule that your exposure to quantum energy just a, just a little bit like like less than five minutes is going to boost your atp for at least two hours so you know it's it is a is a real interesting finding now the second one where there was a different type of human cells that were used in the study in experiment number two uh, the results were that the atp levels are qualitatively consistent with experiment one showing a transient increase in atp levels in the cells exposed to quantum effect however and this is another interesting find of the study the effect does not seem to persistent as lo as long as in experiment Two. So in other words, that it was different than the first one. It didn't last as long as there was a bit more scatter in some of the data sets. Now the data with which these other cells that he had used, which was ADF cells, does not show an increase in ATP levels of the treated cells. In some cases, ATP levels actually decreased in the treated cell set. So what is, in, what, and this is what he stated in his report, that it was unclear why quantum effect might be cell type specific or have opposite effects. So experiment two was, was fascinating because he wanted to try it a different way and he actually got different results. ATP did go up and some types of cells that literally went down or didn't happen at all. So that's important to note. But the third time he did it, which he, he wanted to do, he actually tweaked it in a certain way where he mentions something called the spillover. I'll mention, I'll cover that in a second. But again, he repeated the experiment, tweaked some of the variables. And on the third time he did this test, uh, once again, he states in the report, a transient but statistically significant increase in ATP levels was observed in the treated cells. So, uh, you know, basically he did it three times, two out of three times. He had similar results. Uh, one of the three times there were varied. However, it, they still, the ATP levels still did go up. Now, the overall summary of the report as uh, it's written in the report is right there, is for experiment number three, the clients removed the spillover effect that happened in experiment one and two of the charged cells to the non-charged cells. If that is the case, it makes sense why the first experiments only showed up to an 8% increase in ATP, it's still significant, versus the 20 to 25% in the third experiment in which the non-charged cells were truly non-charged. 
And so what, so what they discovered after the first two um, tests of the experiments, uh, there was some kind of, when the, when the colleague would take the, t the plate of 10 you know, trays and he'd separate out the five plates, um, that there was some kind of a spillover effect and they suspected that the control group may have somehow being in the same room, right, uh, had, you know, been exposed to quantum energy. And that's why they, they felt that when they compared the two to see what the delta was from one to the other, uh, it was lower than the third one when they apparently from, it's not discussed, it's not written in the report. I want to make that clear. This is my assumption. But apparently in the third experiment, they did not bring the other five they left the five somewhere else and the and you know the five to be exposed and the colleague only took the five to expose it and they kept them really far away from each other so there was no quote spillover effect so that's kind of what uh, my assumption is because there's no definition in the report of the of what he means by spillover effect i'm just assuming based on just you know the overall process of the experiment now the last thing i want to really recommend or i mean uh, uh, mention sorry is that this right here this 20 to 25 percent increase in atp is unbelievable okay and so the comment that was uh now the report was then reviewed and and basically the uh, peer review of the paper was done by ian mitchell who's the lead uh, Layla scientific advisor for that company and he's a re reputable incredible scientist all on his own so he peer reviewed this and basically he stated in his over overview his cover letter of the report that an increase in cellular output in excess of 20 percent over baseline allows a person to have more resources at at their disposal biologically across all domains it can be better it can better people help heal <laughs> okay that's exactly that's that's i'm sorry i just cut and paste right out of the report so <laughs> that's like, I, I thought i read this but okay so but it can help people heal from injuries stave off diseases allow for better sorry better mental processing and greatly enhance athletic performance it is a big deal and the even bigger deal was that the quantum upgrade headquarters is like was over 500 miles away from the university of tulsa where the studies were done you know there was no direct you know connection at all so it, it is it, it is not only the fact that you know atp went up is astounding that quantum entanglement actually had an effect and the third thing was is that getting that level of atp increase and what it does to your body is just, you know, it's amazing. And the last thing was, was, you know, we're talking about the way your body processes food, uh, you know, and so like it's, so it's, where did, you know, we like, in other words, where did all this energy come from uh, that was put into the, you know, into the cycle and it produced this ATP? You know, it is really mind boggling that this report and this study demonstrated that it actually really is happening it was done by reputable scientists peer-reviewed by another reputable science double blind and all of that so this is a remarkable study on the effects of quantum energy on on cells and the whole issue behind atp production is that it drives everything else in our body i mean it, it handles everything from cellular repair to again as Ian Mitchell states in his statements, it helps you heal, staves off diseases, a better mental processing, and greatly enhances athletic performance. So this is an amazing finding uh, from this study. Again, you can get the copy of the study on the Layla Q uh, website or the Quantum Upgrade. Just go under their area of research. And that's it. So another amazing study by Layla Quantum Tech. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching. And I just want to say, if you want to learn more, you can go to quantumupgrade.io. This was a service that was used for the study. And you can find me at the Tinkers Academy. Uh, links below in the video description to my blog. And I just, if you'd like this type of content and or you want to follow this video series, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel called Benefits of Quantum Healing. It lists all of the different uh, videos that have been done on all of the different studies. I do these videos as the studies come out or as they become available to me uh, just to basically share and create a video of a multi-page document that most people are not going to have any interest in reading and I feel that the video format is a much more uh, you know digestible form so if you like this you want to follow the series please subscribe and, and uh, to my my YouTube channel and this is where you're going to find them otherwise I just want to say thank you so much for your interest in, if you're in, if you know for your interest in quantum energy and Layla quantum tech and thank you for watching my videos have a great day Aloha